Welcome back everyone to Formula 1 2020 and to your race review for the 2020 Bahrain Grand Prix. Now, by now, I am sure you have all seen the race scene highlights of yesterday's Grand Prix and I want to do today's race review just a little bit different, starting off with the incident that we all witnessed on the opening lap of yesterday's Grand Prix. Don't worry, we will crack on with the rest of the race as normal as I can do a normal race review. But first up, yes, I, I do want to start with that incident because that really set the tone for the entire Grand Prix. After what was a chaotic first couple of corners, most notably Valtteri Bottas flying back down the order, that really caused a bit of a domino effect with drivers trying to get out of the way. The two Ferraris making contact, Lando Norris losing a bit of his front wing, that ricocheted all the way back through the field, resulting in Roman Grosjean and Danny Kvyat making contact at the back of the pack. Grosjean sent careering into the outside barrier on the exit of turn three, a highly unusual place to have an incident. Grosjean's car piercing the barriers, the remaining parts of the car engulfing in flames. Roman, a very, very lucky man indeed to escape with his life after what can only be described as one of, if not the most horrifying accident in Formula One for decades. Certainly, since I started watching in 2007, and what was truly remarkable was how Roman was able to escape that incident. The medical car straight on the scene, the marshals running from the other side of the circuit when they wouldn't have clearance to do that. Gut instincts, instant reactions. What is, quite frankly, incredible safety precautions that goes into Formula One has saved Roman's life. The halo. Please, 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 can we never, ever have moans or debates or arguments about the halo ever again because quite frankly the halo saved Roman's life today so many things had to come to play one slight little change and we could be listening to a completely different story today thankfully we're not thankfully and somewhat incredibly Roman has managed to get out of this incident almost injury free he's got a couple of burns on the top of his hands and then his feet but apart from that no broken bones no lung damage of, of what we have what, what the team have released and the medical reports that have been put on the public display and that is incredible and yeah once again it does kind of render you speechless and it's why I didn't want to release a review straight away I wanted to see the condition I wanted to make sure everything was okay and we also had news this morning that Roman will not be taking place at next weekend's Sakir Grand Prix. And reserve driver Pietro Fittipaldi will be taking his place. I would love Roman to return for the final race of the season in Abu Dhabi. One final send-off. You all, or most of you, are probably aware Roman is my favourite driver. I was already very upset he's leaving at the end of the season. But all things considered, if he doesn't, well, if not able to do the final race, of course, that is totally understandable. But also if he doesn't want to do that final race, what he went through, none of us will ever really be able to experience. And if he does make that decision as a fan, I'm sure all of us would massively, massively understand. For the drivers as well in today's Grand Prix, that would have taken a lot to get back into their cars. I know some of you very quickly are going to point out that's what they're paid to do. They're racing drivers. They know the risks. They know the dangers. That's what they're there to do. But seeing what they would have saw in their mirrors, that ball of flames, something, again, that we have never seen or haven't seen in Formula One for decades, for many of them, that is going to be the biggest ever incident they have witnessed during a Grand Prix. And of course, Though they're rivals, they're all colleagues, they're all roughly friends on the Formula One paddock. And if you've not had the opportunity to listen to a few team radios from a couple of drivers, I think I was able to hear Charles Leclerc and Danny Kvyat, of course, who was involved in the incident. Both of them straight away didn't care about what position they were, straight onto the fact, who was it, how are they, are they okay, update me on when they are out of the car Drivers like Daniel Ricciardo have been very vocal about that red flag period, how many replays were shown, not just for us at home, for viewers, but for the drivers, how that affected their mental state. Valtteri Bottas, Sebastian Vettel looked 
particularly move. Their body language seemed all over the place. And trying to get yourself in that mi- right mind frame to head back into a Grand Prix where an incident like that has just happened, I think all the drivers did an incredible job today. And I think it's further proof of what an incredible community Formula One can be when incidents like this happen. Everyone, again, doesn't matter what team, doesn't matter who you support, everyone always comes together in Formula One. And I do think that is really quite lovely. Of course, you may have seen on social media all of us sending our love, our thoughts to Roman Grosjean. We're all hoping for a super speedy recovery Yes, I would love to see him in Abu Dhabi for that final race of the season. Give him a real send-off, but totally understandable if he decides not to do so. And we'll leave that incident there. Because we did witness a Grand Prix yesterday. An eventful Grand Prix yesterday. Plenty of overtakes. Huge connotations for the remaining two rounds of the season. So before we do a quick rundown of today's events, let's take a look at your results from the 2020 Bahrain Grand Prix. And for the 95th time in his Formula One career, Lewis Hamilton took a commanding victory over the two Red Bulls of Max Verstappen. And for the second time in his Formula One career, Alex Albon scoring a podium. Fun fact, a ridiculous fact. This is the first time since Japan 2017, 2017, that we've had two Red Bull cars on the podium. Let that sink in. Japan 2017, Ricardo and Verstappen second and third on that particular occasion. We have not seen two Red... I could not believe that statistic, but there you go. A great race for the two Red Bull cars. Sergio Perez, how unlucky was he to not score that podium today? I still think there's a chance that Red Bull seat, that second Red Bull seat is up for grabs, but a much better driver, far more consistent driver from Alex today, scores him that second podium of his career. Fantastic drive from the two McLaren boys, Lando Norris securing P4, his second best ever result in Formula 1. Carlos Sainz, his teammate, P5 from 15th on the grid. Some fantastic battling with his future teammate Charles Leclerc along the way. A great drive from the Spaniard and some massive points for a team that are very much in the fight for third in the Constructors. Pierre Gasly went for an audacious strategy. It paid off with a late safety car coming out due to Perez's incident. Eight points, further cementing his incredible season for Alfa Tauri. It was then Daniel Ricciardo 7th, Ocon ninth, in between the two Renaults, Valtteri Bottas. A very disappointing day for the Finn that picked up a puncher in the early stages of the restart. A difficult race fighting back through the field. He's come away in 8th place, 4 points, but very much Max Verstappen is in that fight for 2nd in the standings. And I tell you what, we weren't really expecting that in these last 3 races of the season. Max, we all know how hungry he is, and I think this fight could be one of the spiciest heading into the last 2 rounds of the season. Points for Ocon in ninth. that's exactly what he needs to continue his development at Renault. And the final points going to Charles Leclerc of Ferrari. Outside the points, Danny Kvyat, who was in the wars all day long, a penalty making contact with Lance Stroll. George Russell, two places off points today, but a solid race from the British driver. Sebastian Vettel spinning early on, struggled to really get that momentum for the final stages of the race. Latifi, 14th. The two Alfa Romeos, Raikkonen and Giovinazzi, 15th and 16th. And Kevin Magnussen, P17. Your DNFs, Sergio Perez, Lance Stroll and Roman Grosjean. And I think I'm going to start today's race rundown with the two racing point cars. Of course, Sergio Perez, devastating in those closing stages of the race. But we'll quickly mention Lance Stroll first. Had an okay start on both starts, actually. The initial one and the restart. But contact with Danny Kvyat sent his racing point flying upside down. Lance able to get out of the car. The second use of the halo today. But of course, a disappointing result for the team that were hoping to really put claim on that third in the constructor's standings. And it was looking like they were still going to be able to do that with Sergio Perez, a dominant performance in P3, controlling that podium, even at times trying to play a little bit into those mind games of Hamilton and Verstappen. 
that by itself, the fact that Perez is in the conversation with those two proves how clinical he was during today's Grand Prix. But no mistakes, a faultless drive, but with two laps to go. An engine, a power unit failure, something we are so not used to in Formula One with Mercedes engines. The power unit igniting, the back of the car on flames, a mess. He had to jump out, the fire extinguisher came on and what was looking to be a day to remember, not just for Sergio, two podiums for the first time in his career it would have been in back-to-back Grand Prix, taking control of third in the constructors, fourth in the drivers. Perez has come away with nothing, the team have come away with nothing and just to make things that little bit worse, it's McLaren that have benefited massively from Racing Point's misfortunes. But I tell you what, both McLaren drivers didn't have it easy for them today. Norris, who started 9th, Carlos Sainz started 15th. Both of them had to get those elbows out. They had to be gutsy. They had to be daring. And that's exactly what both of them did. Carlos Sainz, the only driver to start on the soft tyres, that actually worked out quite well. We all thought that they'd be a tyre no one would be interested in. They seemed to be as quick as the mediums, but wouldn't last as long. So why would you go on them? It turned out... Thanks to that delay, I think, that the soft tyres were actually pretty good. Yes, they didn't have the length or the lifespan of those mediums or hard tyres, but there was a pace differential there that I don't think any of the teams were expecting, and Sainz quite easily was able to work his way through the pack in the opening stages. I mentioned a little bit earlier on, had a great fight with Charles Leclerc, had a bit of a ding-dong with the two Renault cars as well. Lando Norris. Also, a driver who had a brilliant start to 2020 has gone a little bit quiet recently after almost getting that podium at the Eiffel Grand Prix. But what a way to re-establish yourself in that fight for third in the constructors and also fourth in the drivers. Both McLaren boys had slipped back a little bit, but both of them picking up big points today, well and truly back on for that best of the rest position. Lando with some awesome overtakes himself. And actually, I think Lando's drive was as good as Carlos's today. Even though he started a little bit further up, Lando was on almost an identical strategy to a lot of those other cars around him. He made a great move, and I got a feel for Pierre Gasly because he did drive a great race, but a great move around the outside of Turn 4. Almost carbon copy of what he did to Gasly last year when he was in the Red Bull. But both McLaren boys really prove him that they want to stay in this fight today and you've got to take your hat off to them. Both of them, fantastic drives. But the other man to really benefit from the misfortunes of Sergio Perez, Alex Albon. Massive result for him. Massive result for the longevity of his Formula 1 career. How much, though, is that going to help him for next season? We're going to have to wait and find out. Because the drive... Though he's come away with a podium, and that's exactly what he needs to do. He needs to be there when Bottas is making those mistakes. Bottas, nowhere near the podium today. Albon able to pick up the pieces. It was down to a racing point, not finishing the Grand Prix, that Albon's come away with this result. He was comfortably behind Max Verstappen today. But I do think it was one of his better drives this season. Very rarely in 2020 have we seen Alex Albon at the front of that midfield, and not just at the front of that midfield, convincingly at the front of that midfield. He was never under threat from anyone behind. We know how good Sergio Perez has been this year. We know how good that racing point car is this season. So I think that's a solid drive from Albon today. But again, of all the drivers to have in front of you, You don't want it to be the guy in the running to take your seat next season. So again, like I say so often this year, a real mixed bag for Alex Albon. And I think it would be far easier to analyse his performances from himself, from from myself and and as, as just fans in general, if we knew what he was doing next year, what Red Bull are thinking with the likes of Sergio Perez. At the moment, we've got to take it at face value. There is no security there. It's... A potential 50-50. I think this result, though, is going to really help him in staying there next season. But it's one I'd love to know your thoughts in the comment section down below. Two races he's got left. I still think he's going to have to prove himself. And I think Perez has a car to get a podium one last time this season. Pierre Gasly, I mentioned him earlier. 
a very different strategy to a lot of those out there. I believe he ended up on a one-stop, went onto the hard tyres, went all the way to the end. A lucky man to have that safety car late on. Of course, no one able to overtake for the final two laps of the Grand Prix. Sixth place, further proof. He deserves to be in a better car than that Alfa Tauri. Renault, double points on face value. That's brilliant. Seventh and ninth. I think they could have done better today. They could have been that team to make better of those misfortunes from racing points from Valtteri Bottas. They should have been where McLaren were because Renault this weekend had a better car than McLaren. They struggled with those tyres in that middle stint of the Grand Prix. Ocon holding up Ricardo. Sainz was able to breeze past both of them. They got caught out by the strategies of Norris and Gasly. Yes, they were able to get one car in front of Bottas. But in the grand scheme of things, losing out to McLaren, their big rival in the constructor standings, is certainly what they didn't want to see. Charles Leclerc and Sebastian Vettel, we knew this wouldn't be a circuit that would suit that Ferrari. Leclerc had a good start early on, but fell backwards during the Grand Prix. And it was a similar story to Sebastian. Sebastian, who did such a great job in qualifying in the race, had that spin earlier on and just fell back through the field. Also outside of that top 10, Danny Kvyat, P11, certainly in the wars today. Contact with Romain Grosjean, contact with Lance Stroll. I think was actually a little bit unlucky to get that penalty with Lance Stroll. I, I would have put that down as a racing incident. I think certainly Stroll wasn't aware Danny Kvyat was up his inside. But I think Kvyat had enough of his car alongside, especially on the opening lap of the Grand Prix. I thought that was very harsh for Danny to receive a 10-second penalty in those circumstances. Not a bad drive, 11th place, considering he had that penalty. But with Yuki Tsunoda having another great weekend in Formula 2, it's looking more and more likely that Kvyat's Formula 1 career could be coming to an end over the next couple of weekends. Other drivers outside that top 10, George Russell and Nicholas Latifi, both of them close to points, but that car still isn't quite where it should be to be able to challenge on a regular basis. Raikkonen and Giovinazzi, the Alfa Romeo, never really came into its own. And Kevin Magnussen, the only Haas left in the Grand Prix, P17, a quiet race for the Dane. Before you go, we'll take a look at this weekend's Formula 2 action in your Formula 2 report. But first, let's take a look at your Drivers' Championship after this weekend's Grand Prix. Of course, Lewis Hamilton, your seven-time Formula 1 world champion, extends his lead over Valtteri Bottas, but it's that fight for second. Verstappen closing in, which is going to be so, so spicy in the last two races of the season. And that fight for fourth, Ricciardo on 102 points, Albert in ninth on 85. I don't think anyone can predict how this is going to unfold over the next couple of weekends. Pierre Gasly on 71 points rounds out your top 10. Lance Stroll, no points this weekend, is on 59 in P11. The only driver in the bottom half of the field to score points this weekend, Esteban Ocon P12. Vettel, Kvyat, Hülkenberg, the two alphas of Raikkonen and Giovinazzi, 16th and 17th. Groge on 18th, 19th Kevin Magnussen and both Latifi and Russell yet to score. In your team's championship, Mercedes, they've been champions for a while now at Red Bull this weekend have secured P2. That fight for third, McLaren are looking good. A nice little buffer over racing point, but Renault and Ferrari definitely in the mix with two rounds to go. Alpha Tauri kind of in no man's land in P7. Alpha Romeo at 8. Hass on 3. And Williams. Come on, boys. Two weekends left. Surely just one point to end off that team season would be absolutely lovely. Let's take a quick look at this weekend's Formula 2 action. And I will send you on your way for next weekend's Sakir Grand Prix. Despite claiming another pole position in 2020, Callum Eilock was unable to hold on to victory, gifting Felipe Drogovic his first and MP's second feature race victory of the season. Eilock was P2, Jehan Daruvula for Carlin, his first ever podium. Schumacher, a difficult race, could only manage P4, 
Nikita Mazepin, P5, Yuki Tsunoda. Driver of the day, 22nd to 6th. What a drive from the Red Bull Junior. In the sprint race, Robert Schwartzman from reverse grid pole converted to victory. But Nikita Mazepin had a fantastic Grand Prix. So many overtakes. Fifth in the feature, second in the sprint, my driver of the weekend. Louis Delatraz, the alternate strategy really paying off. Another podium for him in 2020. Armstrong back in the point. Guan Yu Zhou, P5. And going into the final weekend of the season next time out, Mick Schumacher still leads, but that gap has closed dramatically after that second place for Eilat in the feature race. Mazepin, Schwartzman and Sonoda are still in the hunt and mathematically possible for all five of them to be champion. Lungard, P6, Delatraz, Joe, Drogovic and Giotto round out your top 10. And that's your lot here in Bahrain. An emotional weekend. A difficult weekend for a lot of us to watch. Hopefully, you're all okay at home. Fingers crossed for a speedy recovery for Roman. Next weekend is the Saki Grand Prix. Pietro Fittipaldi will make his Formula One debut. I'd love to know your thoughts on how well he's going to do. But fingers crossed, we see Roman back for the Abu Dhabi Grand Prix. Hashtag Grosjean Army. Thank you all very much for watching, and I hope to see you all in the next one.